data-driven HR is on the HR agenda for many years. But last year shows us that having strategic workforce insights, having insights in your critical roles, having up and down scale scenarios available is more important than ever. My name is Amber Smulders, Business Unit Manager Success Factors within McCoy. And together with my colleague Chris from our Business Intelligence Unit, we created an HR Analytics dashboard on top of Success Factors. This dashboard gives you insights in all your strategic workforce activities, plans, and headcount insights. Watch our McCoy TV video and Chris will demonstrate all the insights with you. Welcome at this demo for the HR dashboard and thank you Amber for the amazing introduction. In this demo, we walk through a number of dashboards as seen on this overview page. These dashboards look into qualitative and quantitative data. We'll start this demo by looking at the current occupation followed by the position and occupation. After that, we'll look into three different kinds of planning with the McCoy Review and the McCoy Review Overview representing the qualitative data. The recruitment, departures and transfers will be following right after that. So let's begin the demo. This is the first page. It shows the current occupation in an organization. The layout of the pages will become a recurring theme with the logo and the title at the top. On the left side, the filters and the KPIs and on the middle and the right side, the content. This dashboard, current occupation, shows the current occupation in FTE and in employees. It's shown for each department, each team, and per age interval. If you want to dive deeper into the data, for example, everybody between the age of 30 and four, uh, 20 and 40, you can simply select that and use the drill down function. As you can see, the data on this dashboard is quite expensive. So let's filter from department supply chain management. The entire dashboard changes when you're filtering the data. This only shows the data connected to the filter itself. This allows the user to make distinct overviews and precise conclusions based on the department, internal, external factor, the team, or the function that they want to see. This page provides an overview, and now we'll look into the details of the current occupation. And this can be done by using the jump to function, by simply selecting and jumping to, or by selecting the next page, and we'll do the latter. On this page, we experience the exact same look and feel with the KPIs and filters on the left side and the content on the right side. Let's filter on supply chain management once again. Now we can look at the details for supply chain management. All filters on the left side of the page can be used at any time, filtering the data on the entire page. These first two pages, current occupation pages, were the only two pages that contained the number of employees. Now all other pages will only look at the FTE. So let's go to the next page. This page shows the FTE of the current occupation versus the planned formation, with the waterfall indicating the planned delta. The other visualizations support the comparison between current and planned data. The top right graph shows the totals, with the department transformation services looking quite suspicious. So we'll filter on that department. All data on the entire page is filtered, with every graph showing only the filtered data. This filtered data provides new insights. For example, the presumed delta for transformation services consists of both under and overstaffing. This shows that for transformation services, 9.9 .9 FTE is overstaffed, while there's an understaffing of 35.6 FTE. The understaffing indicates the need for more FTE, while the overstaffing could indicate obsolete functions, or maybe employees that need to be retrained. To dive deeper into this data, you can either select the next page, which I've shown at the first page, or use the jump to function, and the latter is what we'll do now. This page shows the details pre-filtered with the data for department transformation services. This automatic filtering happens when you're using the jump to function. And while looking at the data, which is presented in tabular form, you can easily look at every bit of data inside there just by simply scrolling through. 
This insight shows that, for example, the teams realize and the team's sales also both contribute heavily into the delta. This is the position planning. It has a slightly different look and feel, because there are less KPIs on the left side, but more filter options. And this also matches the goal of this, spe this specific page. A new version is created every year to strategically plan the, the next three calendar years. And all of these versions and calendar years are available to compare to the current occupation. In this demo, we'll look into version 2022 and calendar year 2023. Once selected, all graphs will change accordingly. And additionally, you can take the retirements into account. This provides an extra dimension to the data, because it seems like there's a deficit of 40 FTE when looking at the total current occupation and the formation FTE version. However, it's actually over 80. It's actually over 85, since the retired employees will need replacement. Once again, the details can be analyzed. These details show the strategic planning and position level. And this data, along with every other visualization, can be downloaded using the export function, which can be found under the three dots, using export, giving it a name, and saving it. The calendar planning shows in a waterfall the selected personnel planning version through the years. So let's filter on department data science. Now you can see the difference through the years with the details below it just for the department data science. And if you need to look at this data from another angle, we've also got you covered with the next page. This visualization shows the personnel planning version from another angle. Let's select department data science once again. And this shows the exact same data as seen on the previous page, only in a different detail. The main difference between the last two pages and this one is the ability to look at the data on team level where the other two pages look at the departments. So let's once again select Department Data Science. And now we can, for example, see the progression for Team Data Science LAUK. It starts at 14.9, goes to 16.8, and then to 18.8. Okay, with the version planning, you can compare different versions for a specific calendar year with each other. With the version planning, you can compare different versions for a specific calendar year with each other. For this example, we'll use calendar year 2023. And in this visualization, you can see there's a version from 2021 and one from 2022. Also, the waterfall shows a delta of 31.1. For this example, let's dive deeper into department managed services. You can see both the graph and the details changing. The main goal of this graph is to gain insight into the stability of your workforce planning over the years, but there are many other insights possible. We've now seen a number of quantity-related dashboards, so now it's time for the quality-related dashboards. What pops onto your screen is a classic 9-grid overview for all employees, categorized by potential and performance. The filters on the left side of the page allow you to look at the specific calendar year or department. In our demo, we only have calendar year 2021. Let's filter on department's transformation services. We see that not only the 9 grid changes, but also the other visualizations change. The bottom three visualizations look at the same data as the 9 grid, showing the potential and performance in a bar chart. And here we see some extra filters on the left side of the page. And you can filter your data to see the low, solid or high performing employees. Or you can filter on gender. All filters can be combined, so for example, the high-performing females can easily be found. Other visualizations based on the same data can be found on the next page. On this page, we can see the performance and potential per age interval and team. Let's look at department transformation services once again. As you can see, all data changes accordingly. A little lower on this page, we have an amazing feature called the graph switch. This feature allows you to look at the data from different perspectives. By default, it shows department, but you can also select team or critical function. So let's look at the teams. Now you can see the performance, potential and evaluation per team instead of per department. You can easily detect positive or negative outliers with this feature. These are the details of the review. Once again, all filters shown on the left side of the page allow you to look at the desired information on a very precise level. 
The sensitivity of this data is extremely high, so make sure you think about the right authorizations for your own dashboard. Every, every single name has been made anonymous. This has been the quality related data. We'll end things with recruitment, departures and transfers. The same look and feel remains, with the KPIs and filters on the left side and the content on the right side. The same possibilities also apply. The filters allow you to look at the specific information you want to see. Now let's look at all recruitments and departures by selecting the All option in the top graph. If you scroll down, the left graph shows the recruitments and departures per department. The right, the right side shows a box plot. With this graph you can easily identify percentual outliers in this data. In this demo we don't seem to have any outliers. The bottom two graphs provide insight into the percentual recruitments and departures. On the left side, for example, you can see there is a so-called leakage at the Department of Managed Services because there are more departures and there are recruitments. There is also a page for the transfers, which also has the, the exact same look and feel. This page shows the same graphs as seen on the recruitments and departures tab, with the addition of the critical functions. The box plot also looks different, but this is due to the fact that there are only three departments in this demo data. This is not enough for a box plot. With your own data, you'll see a beautiful box plot right here. And this was the demo from the Strategic Workforce Planning Dashboard. We started this demo by looking into the current occupation, with the position and occupation right after that. We also looked into a few different types of planning, followed by the qualitative data shown in the McCoy Review and the McCoy Review Overview. We ended the demo with some amazing insight into recruitment, departures and transfers. Furthermore, we, re we realized that this demo is way too short to tell everything about the HR processes that are made insightful with this dashboard. There's a lot more to it, and these 10 minutes gave an introduction and a broad overview of the possibilities, sticking to one simple storyline. For more details, please do reach out to us. Also, we'd love to get in touch with you if you have some amazing ideas to add to this dashboard. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for explaining, and thank you, viewers, for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a like and share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.